Hi, I'm Mike Hutchins, Extension Dairy Specialist at the University of Illinois. This module will discuss the general aspects of feed nutrients. By definition, a nutrient is part of or is found in feed, or if you're a human, it would be food. By definition, it also has the same basic composition in terms of its chemical makeup, and it is essential in the support of life. Once you meet these criteria, you have now defined a nutrient. Generally, there are six nutrients we would consider in dairy cattle nutrition. The first one will be protein. Protein is a nutrient. Typically, levels in feeds will vary from like 6% found in straw and low-grade forages to as high as 82% found in blood meal. Digestibility of the protein can vary, but typically 60 to 80% with forages closer to 60 and concentrates closer to 80%. Second category is carbohydrate commonly abbreviated in these modules as CHO. Carbohydrates vary from 40 to 95% of the feedstuff. Digestibility can be zero if it's lignin to 100%, for example, if it's a sugar. Fat, the third nutrient, will vary in feedstuffs for dairy cattle from very low levels, 3%, to basically 100% fat or oils, such as found in towels or animal fats and oils. Their digestibility will range from 70 to 80%, depending on its source and its processing. The fourth nutrients are minerals or ash. These are quite variable in feedstuffs, so we won't give you a range because some will vary from milligrams or parts per million to as much as percents in the diet. Digestibility or absorption or true availability will vary from 60 to over 90% depending on the given mineral and the form or source of that mineral. Vitamins also vary greatly in feedstuffs depending, again, if it's a weather damaged feed or if it, in fact, is a vitamin supplementation its digestibility can vary from 15 to 95 percent depending, again, if it's a B vitamin or if a fat-soluble vitamin, for example. We do consider water as a nutrient. It'll vary in feedstuffs to as low as 2 percent, such as in some of our mineral products, to as high as 85 percent in some of our very lush grasses. Again, digestibility would not apply to water. So these are the six general nutrient types, and we'll talk about each of these a bit later in other modules. Energy is not considered a true nutrient. It is not considered a nutrient by definition because you cannot chemically analyze for it. However, most dairy farmers and consultants and veterinarians do consider it as a nutrient because it is a first limiting factor in high producing dairy cows that can limit production, reproduction, or health aspects of the cow. Energy is measured in megacalories per pound of dry matter in the United States. If you're in some other European countries, it may be megajoules, which is a little different calculation. And the variation of the megacalories would vary as low as straw, which would be 0.35, to as high as straight fat, which would be 2.65 mcals per pound of dry matter. Most of these energies are expressed on a dry matter basis. The sources of energy, generally there are three of them in the dairy cow ration. Carbohydrates will be the cheapest and most abundant source. Fats and oils, which would be the most expensive source and proteins will be the last source because it's very inefficient to take expensive protein and use them as a carbon source. Again, looking at nutrients, they can be classified generally in two categories. This does not apply to all nutrients, but it will to fatty acids and amino acids. Essential nutrients are those such as essential amino acids like lysine and methionine or essential fatty acids, some of the double bonded carbon fatty acids must be consumed by the animal and it cannot be synthesized in adequate amounts by the animal to meet its nutrients needs. Many ruminant animals can synthesize many of their essential nutrients because of the microbial microbes will produce these key nutrients. Non-essential nutrients can be made or consumed by the animal or synthesized by the animal and therefore is not required in the diet. Finally, non-ruminant animals usually have a higher need for essential nutrients because there's no rumen synthesis occurring in the stomach. Another concept on nutrients is voluntary intake. Generally speaking, voluntary intake refers to that dry matter that's consumed based on appetite and nutrient demand. For example, a high producing dairy cow will have a much higher demand for nutrients producing 100 pounds of milk than say a dry cow. There are three reasons why a cow will start or stop eating. That includes physical fill, simply means the animal is filled up before it meets its nutrient requirement. Chemical feedback, which simply means that something in the brain tells the animal to stop eating, 
such things as amino acids, volatile fatty acid, fats, and oils that fall in that category. And certainly a third reason would be environmental, which means something causes the animal to stop eating that is not related to its feed composition or its nutrient composition. For example, an empty feed bunk. If there is no feed that will limit cows to, to eat, heat stress would be another good example. The amount of feed consumed by an animal, by and large, is dependent on the level of milk yield in dairy cows and their body size. Finally, in terms of absorption of nutrients, there are two sites primarily in a dairy cow. A very minor amount of absorption occurs in the rumen. A key elements or key aspects would be ammonia can be absorbed here, and this is not very desirable because it removes it from the microbial protein source and it needs to be dealt with and excreted by the animal. Water can also be absorbed across the rumen wall and certainly rumen volatile fatty acids. The primary ones, acetic, propionic, butyric, and lactic acid can be absorbed across the rune wall and then metabolized by the animal itself. And of course, if the animal is fed alcohol, such as propylene glycol and products like that, it could absorb the alcohol across the rumen wall as well. The major site of absorption of nutrients, of course, will be in the small intestine and a small extent the large intestine. Primarily in proteins, microbial protein, 60% of the protein will come from microbial sources, 35% from the feed sources and these are absorbed as amino acids and are broken down. We'll discuss that a bit later in another module. Starch is absorbed in the small intestine primarily as simple sugars such as glucose. Fats are broken down to free fatty acids which are absorbed across the intestinal lining and then reassembled in, into triglycerides and formed as micelles and transported throughout the body. Minerals are absorbed across the intestinal lining either actively or may be bound to an organic structure such as an amino acid and absorbed across and, of course, vitamins are across the intestinal lining, especially the fat-soluble vitamins are usually carried with other fat sources as well. Well, this concludes the module on nutrient and nutrient absorption. Thanks, and have a good day.